Last time we saw that we can use polynomial time reductions to prove that problems are hard, as long as we have at least one starting problem that we know we can't solve efficiently. But since our starting point was just to assume that Nash equilibria are hard to compute, I want to give some better motivation by connecting the Nash equilibrium problem with other well-studied concepts in computational complexity. And if we want to classify different problems by their computational complexity, we need to first classify what sorts of problems are we talking about. And we can divide many of the problems we study in computer science into one of these broad categories. A decision problem is one where we are trying to provide a yes or no answer. An example you may have seen before is deciding whether two nodes in a graph have some path that connects them. And an example of a game theory decision problem is determining whether a particular payoff matrix has a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. Next we have optimization problems, where the answer we're trying to find is some maximal or minimal numerical value. So in a graph we might want to look for the shortest distance between two nodes, and in game theory we might look for the best utility that can be achieved by a certain type of equilibrium. And finally, we have search problems where we're trying to find a particular object or instance. An example from graph theory would be actually constructing the shortest path between two vertices, and an example from game theory would be identifying a Nash equilibrium in a game. And many problems we study in computer science naturally have variants that fall into all of these categories. For example, if I want to find the correlated equilibrium that's best for player 1, actually getting the correlated equilibrium is a search problem. Finding player 1's utility under the best equilibrium is an optimization problem. And determining if there is some equilibrium that gets at least a threshold utility would be a decision problem. And so among these problem classifications, there's a bit of a spectrum from search problems, which tend to be the most natural way to phrase many problems, to decision problems, which tend to be the easiest to work with in a theoretical context. If the sort of output that the problem expects is just a yes or no answer, it can be much easier to prove things about the problem or its algorithms. And so in computational complexity, it's common to reason about the decision version of a problem, even if what we'd actually like to write an algorithm for is the search version. And so keeping in mind the relationship between these categories, we can focus for now on decision problems and classifications of hardness among decision problems. You may have heard before of the classes P and NP, which stand respectively for polynomial and non-deterministic polynomial, but what they mean is that P is the set of decision problems that can be solved by polynomial time algorithms, whereas NP is the set of decision problems that can be verified by polynomial time algorithms. When we talk about verification, we mean that if the answer to a particular instance is yes, it should be easy to prove that the answer is yes by something that can be checked in polynomial time. For example, the decision problem of determining whether a game has a pure strategy Nash equilibrium is polynomial time verifiable, because the proof that the game has a pure equilibrium is to just list the actions that make up that pure equilibrium. If a game has a pure equilibrium, then the profile that is the pure equilibrium proves it, and if I give you that profile and the game, you can check in polynomial time by looking at all of the unilateral deviations whether anybody can benefit or whether that is in fact a pure strategy equilibrium of the game. 
So the class NP is the set of all decision problems where, if the answer is yes on a particular instance, there is a proof that can be checked in polynomial time. And as I've drawn here, the class P is definitely a subset of the class NP. Because if you can solve a problem in polynomial time, that is, there's an efficient algorithm that tells you whether the answer is yes or no, then there's obviously a proof that the answer is yes or no. That proof can be to just run the algorithm. So any problem that can be solved efficiently can also be verified efficiently. But there are plenty of problems that we don't know how to solve efficiently, but we can efficiently verify. For example, if I ask you if a game has a Nash equilibrium where the total utility is above some threshold, that might be hard to solve because we don't know how to efficiently find all of the mixed strategy Nash equilibria. But if the answer is yes, then there must be some equilibrium that proves it. And so you could present me the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium that has high enough utility. And I could write an algorithm to check that nobody has a beneficial deviation and the sum of expected utilities is at least the threshold to verify your proof. So it seems like there should be decision problems that are efficiently verifiable but are not efficiently solvable. And that gives us the p not equal to np conjecture. It's well known that there is a subset relationship between p and np. But it still remains an open conjecture that the relationship is strict. There's lots of good evidence in the form of problems that we know how to efficiently verify, but don't know how to efficiently solve. But yet, there is no known proof that these sets are not equal. And this means that if we want to prove that a problem is hard, we can't realistically hope to prove that the problem is not in the set P. Because if we could identify a single problem where we can prove that it's in NP but not in P, then we would have proven the P not equal to NP conjecture. So short of proving that conjecture, the best we can do to show that our problem is hard to solve is to show that it is one of the hardest problems in the set NP. And that is the collection of NP-complete problems. Formally, a problem Y is NP-complete if every problem in the entire class NP can be reduced to Y. And the idea that NP-complete problems exist at all is kind of crazy. When we say that a problem is NP-complete, we're saying that every single decision problem that can be verified in polynomial time can be efficiently transformed into one particular problem. And if we could efficiently solve that problem, we could efficiently solve them all. But we do actually have problems that we can prove are NP-complete, such as Boolean satisfiability and graph three-colorability. And if you took a theory of computation class, you would actually see some of these proofs where you would show that the Boolean satisfiability problem can encode any computation that happens in polynomial time. But for our purposes, we just need to know that there is one problem that's NP-complete. And once we know about that first problem, we can reduce it to other problems. And if we have any chain of polynomial time reductions that transforms Boolean satisfiability into the problem that we're interested in, then we know that that problem is at least as hard as any of the problems in the entire class NP. And if we apply these classifications of P, NP, or NP-complete to some of the problems we know from game theory, all of the decision problems that we know how to solve with a polynomial time algorithm fall into the class P. For example, checking whether a game has a pure Nash equilibrium requires looping through the entire payoff matrix, but that is polynomial with respect to the input size. 
and all of the problems that we've solved with linear programming, like checking for a correlated equilibrium with certain properties, also belong in the class P. But most of the decision problems related to mixed Nash equilibria don't, as far as we know, belong in P. To begin with, there are problems we know are NP-complete, such as deciding whether there is a Nash equilibrium with various properties, such as a total utility above some threshold. And this fact can be proven by a polynomial time reduction from Boolean satisfiability. This sort of reduction would take a Boolean formula and based on that formula, construct a payoff matrix such that the game would have a Nash equilibrium with high enough utility if and only if the Boolean formula we started with had some satisfying assignment, some way to assign the variables such that the overall formula comes out to true. So this sort of reduction transforms between very different types of problems, where we're starting with Boolean variables that are being anded and ORed together, and turning that into a payoff matrix with players and actions and utilities. But once a proof like that has been done, and we know about one game theory problem that is NP-complete, then we can prove that other game theory problems are NP-complete using much simpler sorts of reductions, where we're just transforming between different game theory problems rather than transforming problems of a completely different type. But unfortunately, we still haven't pinned down the complexity of the problem we really care about, which is computing a Nash equilibrium in a particular game. And the trouble is that for the Nash equilibrium problem, there isn't a natural correspondence between the search problem we really care about and the decision problem that complexity theory likes to study. Specifically, the natural statement of the decision problem for Nash equilibrium, given a game, does it have a Nash equilibrium, is entirely trivial. My algorithm for that problem runs in constant time by just returning yes. Since Nash's theorem gives us a proof that every game has an equilibrium, asking this question is really quite silly. So to get a handle on the complexity of finding a Nash equilibrium, we need slightly different definitions that let us actually reason about the complexity of the search problem, not just the decision problem. And that leads us to these complexity classes starting with FNP. We can think of FNP as the equivalent of NP for problems where we want to actually find a specific example, not just determine yes or no. So clearly the Nash problem lives in the set FNP because if I know the Nash equilibrium of the game, I can verify it efficiently by checking that nobody wants to deviate. But whether or not it lives in FP, where I can actually find the equilibrium in polynomial time is uncertain. So just like we don't know how to prove that something isn't in P, we don't know how to prove that Nash is not in FP, so we can think about completeness for functional problems. So a problem is FNP complete if every problem in FNP can be reduced to it, and we can use Boolean satisfiability again, the search version of Boolean satisfiability is to actually find which Boolean variables to set to true and which ones to set to false so that the formula is satisfied. And that problem is FNP complete. But that problem of finding a satisfying assignment is one where the answer could just be no. This particular formula doesn't have any way of making it evaluate to true. So, within the class FNP, we can think about the subclass TFNP, where the T stands for total, and a search problem is total if it is known to have some answer, like Nash equilibrium, where we know that an equilibrium must exist, 
but there's still the problem of finding it. And then, within the class TFNP, we have the class PPAD, which specifies how we know that the problem is total. In a total problem, we know that there is a solution, there is something to be found, but how do we know that? Well, in the case of Nash, we know it because of Brouwer's fixed point theorem, but for other total search problems, we might have other sorts of proof that that problem must have an answer. And the class PPAD is the total search problems where the reason we know it's total is because of a parity argument on a directed graph. And it's not really worth giving a precise definition of what we mean by these parity arguments, but I can give you an example, which is Sperner's lemma. When we talked about Sperner's lemma, where we were looking for some subsimplex that was completely labeled, we knew that the simplex of one fewer dimension on the face must have an odd number of completely labeled simplices. And then we could do walks on a directed graph that would lead us to the fully labeled subsimplex of full dimension. And we knew that one of those walks would get us where we were going because the walks that failed paired up, and so there must be an odd one out that terminates somewhere inside the simplex. And so we're using a directed graph and we're making a parity argument about odd versus even. And so all of the problems that are of this type are in the class PPAD. Now, PPAD seems like a much smaller and less significant class of problems than everything we can verify in polynomial time, but it does contain lots of interesting problems relating to identifying fixed points, which come up a lot in game theory and in other branches of economics, and just about anything that relies on Brouwer or other fixed point theorems. And so to finally classify the difficulty of the Nash equilibrium problem, it is complete for the class PPAD. Everything that is a total search problem that is polynomial time verifiable, and it is known to be total by a parity argument on a directed graph, can be translated by polynomial time reductions into the problem of finding a Nash equilibrium in a game. So that means that finding a Nash equilibrium is at least as hard as any of the other fixed point problems, since they can all be translated into Nash. And since we don't have a polynomial time algorithm for any of the problems that are PPAD complete, we have reason to think that the PPAD complete problems can't be solved in polynomial time. But again, that's not a proof, that's just an argument from our failure to devise algorithms. And so just like we have the unresolved p not equal to np conjecture, we end up with, for Nash, the conjecture that it is an np intermediate problem. It seems, from the evidence we have, like computing a Nash equilibrium is harder than any of the things we can solve in polynomial time, but yet it also doesn't seem as hard as the NP-complete problems. It is complete for a much smaller class. And so in addition to our failure to identify an efficient algorithm for Nash, PPAD completeness gives us some additional evidence that it's probably not easy to solve, but we don't actually know for certain whether some polynomial time algorithm is out there.